Welcome to Hook for Life. I'm Rob Clark with Clark's Custom Flies, and this is a beginner's fly tying series. Over the next few videos, we're going to be tying some very simple patterns, three form materials, and simple steps in order to tie some of our favorite patterns and some of the best patterns you can use to fish with. And we'll get started right now with the green rock worm. The hook I'll be using is a Camasan B420 sedge hook in a size 12 green uni olive thread and 8 aught fine gold wire for the ribbing and a green caddis green rabbit fur dubbing and a small black bead for the head. The first step we need to do is put the bead on the hook. I'm going to rotate the hook and the vise 90 degrees so the hook point is facing straight up. So now I've got the bead in a small pair of tweezers. I'm going to slide the bead onto the hook. I'm going to rotate my hook again. 90 degrees back into the vise for our tying point and slide the bead forward. Now the bead that we're using and all the beads that you buy will have a small hole in the f on the top and a larger concave hole in the back. What you want is a smaller hole to go forward towards the eye of the hook and a larger concave side to go towards the back towards the barb of the hook. The size of the bead will depend on the size of the hook that you're using and the size of the fly that you want to tie. The next step we're going to do is I'm going to put a thread base on. I'm taking my thread, wrapping the body, I'm going to trim off my excess, and I'm going to bring my thread wraps down past the bend of the hook. to about the barb when the thread is hanging down straight down. The next step we're going to do, we're going to take the fine gold wire. I'm going to place it on the side of the hook, lock it in, and wrap all the way up, trying to keep the wire on the side of the hook. And it's about halfway the length of the body. And the reason why I've done this is in order to keep the wire to stay in there and tight. I'm going to bring my thread back to our starting point of the fly. Right here. The next step we're going to do is do the dubbing body. Now you can use whatever dubbing you like. There's rabbit's fur, seal's fur, hare's air. There's a multitude of different dubbings that you could use. Feel free to use whichever one you're most comfortable with. Most people use a dubbing wax on their thread. Um, the fly is relatively small and this is good dubbing, so I'm just going to use a bit of saliva onto the thread to help the dubbing stick. Most of the time when you're using dubbing, you're going to learn that less is more. It's easier to put a little less on and go back over to create the taper and the look that you want than it is to try to put too much on because it doesn't come off as easy. As you place the dubbing onto the hook, I've taken my forefinger and my thumb and a pinch look and I'm rotating the dubbing one way. If you try to rotate the dub your fingers both ways you're actually putting the dubbing on and then taking it off again. In this motion one way you're able to lock the dubbing onto the thread nice and tight and pinch it down. Now I'm just going to begin my body nice and thin near the back end and slowly increase the size of the body as we go towards the bead. What we're looking for is a nice taper in the body, a nice natural look, and a thicker thorax in behind the bead. This is nice and simple because if dubbing is all one color and we can easily create a nice tapered body. So as I come behind the bead I'm going to keep going over and over a few more times. I'm actually going to add a little bit more dubbing 
because when we do our whip finish and add our wire, we'll push that dubbing down a little bit, but I still want to keep that look of a thorax behind the bead. Just like that. The next thing we're going to do is bring our gold rib up. The amount of ribs and turns that we put on the body will depend on the shank length of your hook, and it'll be a little bit of personal preference as well. Some patterns will call for an exact amount of turns, but in this case we're probably looking at about three or four with the size of the body. I'm going to take my wire and have my hands just place relatively at a 45 degree angle and bring up some nice, clean, soft wraps as even as we can right in behind the bead. I'm going to do two turns of my thread to just lock the wire in. And then I'm going to come in with my scissors and trim off the wire as close to the bead as we can. Now what we tried not to do was cut the thread, but I did. But in this case, just don't panic. Everything's locked into place. We'll start the thread in behind the bead once more. Do two or three, four turns to lock in your thread. Trim off your excess thread. And then we're going to come in with a small whip finish in behind the bead. Two or three or four wraps. That'll be entirely up to you depending on how would you would like to lock it in. There's four. It's locked into place. Trim my thread. And there we have the green rockworm. Very simple caddis pattern. You can tie it in several different colors to imitate the caddises that you have in your area or the time of year that they're hatching. Enjoy this pattern. It's simple, effective. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm.